The world of clinical research is changing. As the tremendous molecular heterogeneity in lung cancer becomes clear, you're not going to find enough patients with a given molecular abnormality within the traditional catchment area of any of the major cancer centers. So we have to address how we're going to do clinical research in an era of geographically dispersed patients. The first challenge is, how do you get the message out to patients to even come to you in the first place and have this molecular testing? Um, there is clinicaltrials.gov, which is a pre-existing government-run website listing most of the studies going on in the United States. It does have a search engine, but it's not really designed for a patient to work it. You have to know the code number of your drug. It doesn't really tell you very much about the drug. There's no map. You can't enter your zip code and say these are the closest centers. Even the contact details for the center don't have a telephone number or an email for the scheduler to actually get you into the clinic. So that, that's a really easy fix. The other factor is and even, even before you get to that point, the patients have to know what they're looking for. And that's where there's some really well-informed, patient-based websites. Uh, a very good example is Jack West's Global Resource for Advancing Cancer Education, or GRACE. And there, that's, he calls it Expert Moderated Forum. So he has a number of physicians who will go in there, put posts, will field questions from patients. And the example of the Krizotnip styles, I, I have to give some credit to Jack, because early on, when the story was just breaking, when the, the first glimmer of the phase one results were coming out in 2009, Jack asked me to do a podcast, and I didn't actually know what a podcast was, but it, it involved me doing my clinic at work, and then Jack phoned me from Seattle to Denver, and then I gave a talk down the telephone whilst he showed my slides, captured it all digitally, and then he posted it on the internet. And that's since been downloaded thousands of times. And I would say at least a third of the patients who came to see us actually heard about us from that podcast. So getting that kind of informed information out, having chat rooms that say, I'm not lung cancer, but I'm EGFR mutant lung cancer, or ROS1 gene rearranged lung cancer, is the way of the future. And there's a, there's a wonderful example that goes back to GIST tumors uh, with George Dimitri in, in the Dana Farber, who very early on, when the internet was first starting, told me the story that uh, he'd approached um, the NIH about doing a study in GIST, and they said, You'll, it'll take you 20 years, and it'll never work. And by the time he'd harnessed the internet and got these internet-savvy, smart patients who were looking up, and they traveled to him, he was recruiting you know, many, many patients a week just by getting the word out. And I think we are in the 21st century. We do have digital communication. We can get the word out. There's still a challenge. There's still a challenge that even if the patient knows what their abnormality is and knows where they need to go, we still have 20th century trial designs that say you have to travel hundreds of miles to come to Denver to sign a piece of paper before I can send your tumor off to testing. Why don't we have remote consenting built in as a line item in the budget for clinical trials? Most of these patients are paying on their own dollar for travel and accommodation Given that the pharmaceutical industry wants to put people on the clinical study, and these are trivial costs to them, that should be reimbursed. Why, when there are visits, when you're not actually getting treatment, you know, you're just having a toxicity check, why should the patient travel for that? Why can't we just use local laboratories and use telemedicine? We just speak to them on the phone or even a video conference through Skype to say, how are you doing? It's totally feasible and could really be built into trial designs in the future and make it useful for patients. And I guess the other one, which is really obvious, is if all of your trial sites are based you know, on the East Coast, you're not going to get any patients from the rest of the country. You have to spread them out like airline hubs across any major landmass. And I think that's what the, that, that map in the HAV mutation will travel was trying to get home. It looks like um, the, the airline hub map in your in-flight magazine, and that's not a coincidence. You have to spread these out.